Hi folks, how are you doing? Right, part two of the Death Wish. We're going to be looking at the Death Wish Crossbones. This is it here. I've got the avocado uh, RDTA on top. So this is a mechanical mod from Death Wish Mods in Canada, designed by Maxime Dubé. Uh, yeah, it's a 26 millimeter device. This is a stainless steel one. You get them in stainless steel, brass, or copper. And they retail, well, you get the mod and the atomizer together for £150. So I've not actually seen the mechanical device separately, but I imagine it'd be around about the £90 mark, I would have thought. So yeah, you're looking at £90 for this custom made uh, mechanical competition device. Right, a copper switch. Uh, I think the copper and the stainless steel come with copper switches and the brass comes with a brass switch, I think. I've not seen the brass and the copper as I purchased the stainless steel. But before we do the close up, just gonna discuss battery safety. Now, I've done videos in the past regarding mech mods and I've had lots of people saying that batteries when they do fail, they'll fail from the top, they'll fail from up here. So why put the battery in you know, positive up? I mean, ever since I've been using mechs, I've always put my battery positive up. But the crossbones actually vents down here. And I've been you know, looking at Reddit, doing research, and apparently there's no difference between putting a battery positive up or negative down. It just depends on your wrap, making sure that your wrap's in perfect condition. So, the advice that I've seen and researched is that with a mech device with venting at the bottom, take your positive, right, and your negative, put your negative up. In a, in, a in a mechanical device, it doesn't really matter about the sort of polarities because of the way the device works with the coil. So you're not going to reverse polarities and short things because there's nothing here to short. And it'll fire fine with the negative, with the, sorry, with the positive down. But if the battery was to fail, it would fail. It would vent out here or vent at the bottom. But say something like the Rogue, the Rogue USA, right? Well, the vent holes are at the top of the device. So you would put the positive up, and then if the device did fail, it would vent out of these top holes. So it really depends on what mechanical device you're using. If your vent holes are at the top, put your positive up. If your vent holes are down the bottom or at the switch, put your battery positive down. So if it did fail, you know, hopefully it wouldn't. It'll vent where the holes are. Okay. So yeah, that was... I've had people commenting on videos previously and you should put your battery in the uh, positive down if you've got holes at the bottom. And yes, I've, I've looked into it and I've researched it and the advice that I've seen is that if your vent holes, whatever your vent holes are, basically that's where you should put your uh, positive on your battery in your device. There we go. Okay. Got the close-up then of the Deathwish mods crossbones the hanged edition okay then let's take a look at the death wish mods crossbones hanged edition mechanical mod now this came as part of a set with the unholy rda as you can see from this box it's very highly stylized you've got the skull and crossbones the inverted cross crosses and you've got a sort of gray washed out wood effect on the box i do believe that the copper's like a orangey sort of wood color and the brass is more yellowish, sort of straw coloured wood effect on the cross the coffin. Crossbones on the side. 2016. Death Wish. Mods. Right, let's open this box. It's not the easiest box to open. Here they are. It's a little tight. There we go. And here we have the hanged edition crossbones. In the box you get a spare spring. Now this is a stainless steel spring. This is a soft spring. It's quite a firm one in the device itself. This is really soft, springy. Pops in the box like so. Let's take the device out. 
here we have the crossbones, the hanged edition. You've got this really deep, very deeply engraved uh, hangman's noose on the front of the device. It's really well. Look at that close up. It's beautifully engraved. I do believe these are made in China. They were designed in Canada, but made in China, I believe. Designed by Max Dubé. You've got the engraving down the bottom. The hanged. It's a hybrid adapt. Well, basically, it's a it's all one piece. But you've got a hybrid 510 here. And you'll notice there's some scratches on the top. And that's from the unholy RDA, actually. Because there's some etching on the bottom of the RDA. And I've noticed it's been scoring the top of the device. But, you know, this is a 316, 316 stainless steel made device. Uh, you do get it in brass and copper, as I said before. But I chose to go for the stainless steel because being a hybrid, it's direct contact with the battery. So, I mean, all this thing about, oh, it's like a train. If it's a hybrid and it's direct contact with the battery, you're going to get minimal uh, voltage loss anyway. So it doesn't matter what it's really made of. Let's unscrew this. This is a switch. It's a copper switch. Now, I believe that the copper and the stainless steel come with a copper switch. But from pictures of the brass, it looks like the switch is brass here, but it's got a copper pin. I mean, the threads are so smooth, really smooth. And this cross, this section here, is actually, it's not sharp. It's quite, well, mine's is quite rounded off, so it's not uncomfortable when you're pressing it. There we go. Very, very, very smooth switch. You've got, between this and the bottom, you've got about six millimetres of play. So it is quite a long throw in the switch. Your battery will probably contact there. But yeah. And having this sort of device as well with screws right in, that's part of your battery adjustment as well. Right. It's 26 millimetres in diameter. It chamfers down to 24 here at the bottom and at the top. So you've got a real thick, really thick amount of stainless steel protecting, you know, the 18650 battery in your hand. You know, there's a bit of grime in the bottom of there. That was when I was washing it out. Can't get that out at all. Don't know what that's from. Let's have a look at the switch now. This is your copper contact pin. As you can see, you've got this nylon insulator surrounding it. There was some issues with the uh, crossbones mods, actually the switch jamming. I've not had any issues at all. There is a video that uh, Max posted showing you how you can take this pin out, safely put it onto a drill and sort of sand the edges just to round them off, and make it a smoother switch. But I've had no issues. Right, let's take it apart. Right, that's your contact pin. As you can see, there's venting holes there as well. So it will vent out the switch as well. So if you do have a failure, it'll vent through these holes. And it'll also vent through this big X on the side of the device. Because you can see where the X is. Can you see that? That's basically where the bottom of your battery would be sitting. So if your battery did fail, it's going to vent straight out of there. So yes, if you're using the crossbones, I would advise to put your battery in... Uh, positive down towards this. Right, let's take the rest of the switch out. Here's another stainless steel spring. This is a much firmer one, much stiffer spring. And you've got this cross here that fits into there, so you don't get any spinning from your switch. Right, you've got this nylon sort of Delrin insulator in the bottom. You've got nylon sort of delving insulator here as well. So your spring does not come into the circuitry at all this device. The spring is completely isolated, so you're not going to get spring failure. Which, you know, it's brilliant. Nothing wrong with a There's nothing wrong with a spring switch if it's done properly. And if it's done properly like this. It's 
So it goes to it goes together very easily, very easily. So if you're going to be cleaning it, taking it apart, no issues at all. No issues. Just nip that up, tighten that. There we go. Such a smooth switch, very smooth. It's so well machined. I mean, if it is made in China, it's made very, very well. You need to remember that, you know, a majority of high-end sort of uh, devices do come from China. You know, your smocks, your Kangatex, your Asmodis, yeah, they're all sort of high-quality devices and they're all manufactured very well. I mean, you're looking at what, probably, we're probably looking at £90 for this because it's £150 for the set. I know you can pay £60 for the RDA. So you're looking at £90 for this beautifully made stainless steel, copper or brass mechanical mod. £90, can't really knock it, especially with that switch. Right, let's weigh it. Pop it on the scales, let's see how much it weighs, because it is quite heavy. This is without a battery. It's bang on 200 grams, or 201 grams. <laughs> so 201 grams for this device. Yeah. Let's compare that to, say, the Rogue. What's the Rogue? This is the aluminium Rogue. 78 grams, so yeah, it's uh, more than twice the weight of the Rogue. And then my Mad Dog Competition flagship, which is, yeah, that's heavy. That's 227 grams, but that is solid copper. Let's compare them in size. So with the Mad Dog mod, and no, you don't get silver Mad Dogs. I got this one silver plated. This is my baby. This is my pride and joy. But for every day I've been using the crossbones. The Mad Dog is probably three millimeters taller. This is a 25 millimeter device, and I said this is 26 millimeters. So yeah. The crossbones is a millimetre, you know, bigger in diameter. Let's get the Rogue. And the Rogue's much shorter. Again, this is a 25 millimetre device. But the Rogue's a shorter device. I mean, this is £150. This is £150. This works out at £90. Yeah, I mean, I love the switch and the throw on the Mad Dog, but compared to the Rogue, I'm not a great fan of the switch on the Rogue. I do prefer the switch on the Crossbones, much prefer the switch on the Crossbones. I find the switch on the, or switch on my Rogue is just a bit clunky, extremely clunky and a bit stiff compared to the smooth switch. Right, dimensions. So in length it is 90... I'm getting 92. So it's 92 millimetres in height. And as I said before, this is 24 millimetres, but the device itself is 26 millimetres. So yeah, it's a nice pocketable size. Mechanical mod. Anyway then, so that's the Deathwish mod, Crossbones, the Hanged Edition. Let's pop up, have a vape and tell you what I think. Okay then, so that was the close-up of this. The Deathwish mods. Oops. Crossbones, Hanged Edition. Yeah. So, overall, what do I think about this device? Oh, quick vape first. What was a vapour? You know, this full setup, the RDA and the MEC, £150. I think it's a really, really good buy. I love the quality of the crossbones. I do love the engraving. I especially love that switch. That switch is so nice, it's so smooth. 
Now there was some bad press regarding the Switch. I think when Max first released it, two of the Switches did jam. But Max has posted a video, and I'll put the link down below, of how you can basically clean that top, you know, the top copper pin that I showed you in the Switch. How you can clean it uh, around about the edges, just in case of tolerance, tolerances between the copper and the sort of nylon insulators are a bit tight. You can actually sort of shave a little bit off uh, with his technique, and you know, it's it's a really really smooth switch. I do love the switch on this. Oops. Bit of leakage. Um, yeah, I mean, I've not seen the copper, I've not seen the brass, but I'd imagine they're as well built as this 316 stainless steel mechanical mod. Yes, it is 26 millimeters, and yes, you do have this taper up to 24 millimeters, and I mean, I suppose the good thing about it is because of the 18650 chamber, it is so narrow and it takes that battery perfect. You've got a lot of stainless steel or a lot of copper and a lot of brass between your hand and that battery. So in a worst case scenario, if that battery did fail, you know, the, the device is going to hold that explosion basically. Yeah, it's going to hold it, vent it without sort of injury to yourself. So yes. From a safety point of view, I much prefer the sort of 26 millimeter sort of larger device. But then again, I like my Mad Dog mod as well. It's, I mean, I've got a lot of mechanical mods, and I'd have to say, for everyday use, chucking them in my pocket, I do like this. I do like this. It's a very usable, very everyday device. You know, it's not going to tarnish. It's sturdy, it's well made. Switch comes apart very easily for cleaning and for you know any sort of work you need to do on it. It's a hybrid device, so remember if you're using hybrid devices, like I had the, uh, where was it? Took it off. Oh, there it is, yeah. I mean, I had the, that's the, Geek Vape, Geek Vape Avocado uh, 24. If I just focus into this, you can see that the 510 pin protrudes a lot from the avocado. So, yeah, and it's also adjustable and that will fit onto a hybrid device. So, you're not getting arcing. So, you have to be really, really careful. I mean, something like. Uh, you know, these sub-own tanks, you wouldn't stick anything like that on a hybrid device. has to have a protruding 510 pin for your own safety. So yes, if you're buying something like the Crossbones from uh, Deathwish Mods, make sure that the RDA that you're putting on top or your RTA you're putting on top has a really good protruding or an adjustable 510 pin. Yes. But yeah, the Deathwish Mods Crossbones, the Hanged Edition. I love it. Fantastic. Now I do believe, let me check a calendar. Uh, let me check my calendar. Dun -dum -dun -dum, dun -dum -dum. Expo. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. So the weekend of October, the 14th, 15th and 16th, Max Dubé will be at the Birmingham Expo and he will be there promoting the Death Wish mods his thick oil juice and the wire doctor. So yes, I'm hoping to get there on one of the days, probably this Saturday. I'll probably be there. But yes, if you want to see the man behind Deathwish Mods, get yourself over to the Birmingham Expo the weekend of the 14th, 15th and 16th of October. Meet the man himself and you may have options to buy more. Or you'll definitely get to buy the wire doctor and thick oil. But yeah, for the £150 for this device, I love it. I've said that already. Sorry. <laughs> Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. Anyway, guys, that was the Death Wish mods. 
Crossbones Hanged Edition. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you do go to Birmingham Expo, I hope to see you there. Anyway, thank you very much. Take care. Ta-da!